Hi everyone, I'm Jonette, your favorite 4-H agent with a Health Rocks lesson for everyone. Is stress making you feel crazy? Is it making you feel like cutting all your hair off? Or screaming at everyone you know? Maybe you just want to be left alone in the dark and not hear a sound. Maybe you want to smash something or tear something to pieces. If so, you are not alone. We all have moments or periods in our life where we feel like doing some of these things, but it's normal. We all feel the strain, the pressure of something called stress. But stress is a part of growing up. It's a part of life. You're never going to escape it. But what you can do is learn healthy ways to cope with stress. And that's what we're going to focus on today. We're going to focus on stress and healthy ways to relieve stress that does not include alcohol, tobacco, or drug abuse. I have some definitions for you because when we say the word stress, we often think that stress is bad, but there are actually two different kinds of stress. Stress in general is a state of mental or emotional strain or tension resulting from adverse or very demanding circumstances. It is something that causes mental, physical, or emotional strain. The first of the two types of stress, number one, is distress. Distress is what causes us anxiety, sorrow, or pain, and it can be extreme extreme sorrow, extreme pain, or extreme anxiety. Distress is a bad stress. Eustress is the second kind of stress, but eustress is a good stress. Eustress may not always feel good because things can be a challenge to us even though we enjoy the activity. However, you could be so preoccupied in whatever that activity is, meaning your heart is pounding, the adrenaline is coursing through your veins, but in reality, it's good for you because you are doing something you enjoy. You stress drives you to achieve better things. It's that stress, it's that want to do good that pushes you through the challenges pushes you to achieve that goal and to reach the end of whatever the task is that you have set yourself to doing. And in the end, after you've accomplished it, it's an exhilarating euphoric feeling of accomplishment. That is you stress, the good stress. So let's try a stress challenge. For this, you will need a piece of paper, and you will need a pencil. On your piece of paper, I want you to make three dots in a line. And then under that, make three more dots. And under that, make three more dots. So that you have nine dots all together in a shape like this. Now, without lifting your pencil, you're gonna draw through all nine dots using only four straight lines. Are you ready? I will give you 60 seconds to see if you can do it. On your mark, get set, go.
Were you able to achieve it? Could you do it? Did it frustrate you while you were trying? No pressure, but you were timed, so you were under some type of limitation. Yes, you can actually accomplish this task for those of you asking. So here is the solution to this very simple task. So let's talk about what did you feel? Everyone undergoes stress at some point in their life. And to just give you a few examples, physical symptoms can be extremely tired, having headaches, having a lump in your throat, tight or aching neck and shoulders, heartburn, backache or pain, faster beating heart. Some behavioral symptoms, grinding your teeth, not being hungry, overeating, being fidgety and restless, smoking or using tobacco products, acting out, using drugs, it could be nail biting, it could also be trembling legs and getting poor grades in school. Some emotional symptoms, being irritable, having anxiety, being anxious, being withdrawn, being overly aggressive, overly critical of others or everything that's presented to you, being overly emotion or impatient or just generally unhappy. And some cognitive symptoms, this is how stress affects your ability to think and to reason or even to remember. Having difficulty with memory, the inability to concentrate, unable to make decisions, being negative, constantly worrying, constant confusion. These are all symptoms of stress. You may recognize them in yourselves. I certainly recognize several of these that I go through almost daily. <laughs> you may also recognize these in family members. The truth is we all experience stress. Let's learn some healthy ways to handle this stress that allows us all to live a healthy life. Now our next activity requires some participation from you and I am also going to bring in a very special guest to help with this next demonstration. For this segment, you will need the handout called All Stressed Out. This particular handout requires you to look at the things in your life that stress you out on a daily basis. Take a look at those items, read through each one carefully, and decide how much stress these things cause you. You have a range of numbers between one and five. One means a little stress, and five means a lot of stress. So you have a choice, one, two, three, four, or five. Five being the absolute worst. If the item does not cause you any stress, then don't feel obligated to circle anything. At the very end of that worksheet, you'll notice that there's a place for you to write in some other things. Of course, this is not an exhaustive list of items that can cause you stress. So there's your opportunity to write in some things that cause you stress, okay? So take a few moments, look over that handout, circle your numbers, and meet me back here with our very special guest who is going to do this activity with us. Now, once you finish the handout, you will need a balloon. If you have a balloon in your house, grab a balloon. And you might wanna get your parents in the room and your other siblings in the room to do this activity as well. I think it'll be really good for you to see how stress affects everyone else around you. Okay, on your mark, get set, go. To help us with this next segment, I have a special guest. Her name is Lynn Hatton, and she is the unit administrative assistant for our um, extension office here in Carroll County. So Lynn will be blowing a puff of air into a balloon for every item that I read off where she feels stressed. And you are advised to do the same thing. I will be reading off these items. Are you ready, Lynn? I'm ready. Okay. 
If you don't have a balloon and you're doing this activity, just circle the number. If you do have a balloon and you're doing this activity, depending on what number you circle, you're going to blow that amount of breaths into your balloon. Keep the air in the balloon. Your balloon is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger, and it is a possibility that it may pop. Don't purposely try to pop your balloon because I know that is fun, okay? Here we go. The way your hair looks. Blow one puff of air if you have little stress. If that stresses you out a lot every day, circle five. But just blow the number of breaths into your balloon that corresponds with the number you circled or the number you chose on your handout. Number two, adults at home. Money, that could be not having enough. Your weight. Your homework. Or this also could be your child's homework and getting your child to do their homework. Peer pressure. Do people in your life pressure you to do things you don't want to do? Sports. Do sports stress you out? And if you're an adult doing this, does your sports team not playing well stress you out? Your friends. Do your friends cause you stress? Your clothes. Deciding what to wear every day, the types of clothes that are in your closet, does that stress you out? Laundry. Or cause you stress? Ooh, good point, Lynn. Parents, does doing the laundry stress you out? <laughs> <laughs> siblings. Do your siblings stress you out? That's your brother, your sister, whether they're older or younger, live in or out of your house. Do your siblings stress you out? Having a lack of free time. How about being stuck home under home quarantine during this COVID-19 state? Is that stressing you out? The fact that you have nothing to do, does that stress you out? Responsibilities at home. Do those responsibilities stress you out? Is your balloon getting as big as Lynn's? Your complexion. Are you having problems with acne right now? Stress breakouts. Could just be puberty could be your diet. <laughs> school activities. Well, what about the lack of school activities? The lack of things for you to do at school? Or perhaps the school activities your parents have you doing while you are under quarantine during the COVID-19. Are those things stressing you out? How about changes to your body or your voice? Are those things stressing you out? If you notice on your handout, there are two other choices that you have there to add in for yourself. Lynn, would you like to add anything there? Other stressors in your life? Coworkers? No. <laughs> <laughs> no what about transportation? Oh, yeah. Does transportation stress you out? Getting your car fixed, oil changes, tires rotated, keeping up with maintenance. That's a big balloon. <laughs> The balloon is very big. <laughs> okay, so um, there's another one there. Um, if you wrote something else in there under the other choice, go ahead and blow the puffs of air into your balloon that correspond with the number that you circled. What about coronavirus? It's coronavirus, right is that a big stressor in your life? If it is, blow the puffs of air that correspond with the level of stress that the coronavirus has caused you and your family, or just you. I can't believe Lynn's balloon has gotten this big. <laughs> can, you, can you see how big like this size, balloon is? It's this, a baby. It's, it's a very, I wish I had a measuring tape to measure the size of Lynn's balloon. So, yeah. Yeah, hold on to it, don't let it go. <laughs> I don't wanna touch it. So, as you can see, this balloon is bigger than both of our heads put together. Guys, that's a lot of stress. And if you carry this amount of stress around with you every day, you're ready to pop.
kind of like this balloon probably is, and maybe like how your balloon has already popped. So with this activity, I hope you have the opportunity to do this with your family. And if they are watching you blow up this balloon, then explain to them what is causing you stress. So the next segment. Oh my God! <laughs> segment. to pop as well and you are full of stress and you're ready to blow it any minute <laughs> so this is a great activity to do with your family to help you all understand how much stress everyone is experiencing this is a great conversation starter but we are going to talk about some ways to manage your stress so thank you lynn you're for welcome. such a fun time with this balloon activity i always enjoy having guests with me stay tuned and we'll talk about ways to cope with stress. <laughs>we're going to talk about ways to combat stress in your life. But first, the National Institute of Health and the U.S. National Library of Medicine all have write-ups and scientific studies about how stress impacts drug abuse and vulnerability to drug abuse or tobacco use or different unhealthy behaviors that we form. Stress is a well-known risk factor in the development of addiction and in addiction relapse vulnerability. Stress has long been known to increase vulnerability to addiction. Stress is one of those major factors in why adults, why teens, why children turn to drugs or some other substance to alleviate stress. And that is a very unhealthy behavior that we would like for everyone to avoid. It is well researched and well documented that stress impacts our vulnerabilities to substance abuse. We're going to explore ways that we can alleviate stress. What better way to tackle stress than with some stress balls? And there's a different variety. These, one I purchased, and ones that I'm gonna show you how to make. This one, I call my Fushi. You can see why, because it's squishy. And I can play with this for hours to help me alleviate stress. These are different ones that I made using balloons and items I had at home. So this one, my little ninja, is made with beans and cotton balls. Just some dried beans, some cut up balloons and cotton balls. This one is a bigger size, as you can see. Our little ninja here has cotton balls and beans inside so that it has greater squishability. And here's one that just has beans. And so you can see it's small and the beans give it a texture of a little grenade. This one is made with slime. I know how much everyone loves to play with slime. So here's a different use for that slime. Put as much as you can in a balloon, fill it up and make a great squishy ball. This one, however, is filled with oobleck. If you don't know what oobleck is, mix some water and some cornstarch and you've got oobleck. Oobleck will get firm over time, but the more you hold it in your hand and squish it, the softer it becomes. Let me show you how to do this. There are just a few items you will need to complete this task. A bunch of balloons, some dried beans, some cotton balls, or you can use flour, You'll need a funnel to help you get these items inside. To make our stress ball, the first thing you're going to need to do is select a color of a balloon and you're going to cut off or trim off the neck of the balloon. Don't trim too short, otherwise everything inside will fall out. But just trim off the rim of the neck of the balloon and begin filling it, in this case, dried beans. If you prefer to use something else, feel free to use something else. But for this demonstration, I'm going to use dried beans. And I'm going to use a spoon to help me fill the balloon with beans. 
Once I get a small amount of beans into the balloon, I'm going to stuff in some cotton balls. The cotton balls will allow the beans some freedom of movement and it won't make it so compact that it won't give me the desired squishability that I'm looking for. Once I pack in a couple of cotton balls, I'm going to squish it around just to make sure that the beans are surrounding the cotton ball. At this point, I can also check the size of my stress ball. If I want it to be bigger, then I can always put in more beans. I'm going to add a few more beans to make this a little bit bigger. I'll test the squishability. And if I don't like that, I will add in some more cotton balls to give it more volume and to give it more squishability. And don't worry if you get a few beans on the table or if they go flying. I mean, what's a little experiment without just a little bit of mess? Once you have filled your stress ball to your desired consistency and squishability, if you can, tie off the open end of your balloon like this to prevent everything inside from squishing out. This is very important, especially if you're using flour or slime to fill your stress ball. If you can't tie off the end, then ask a parent or an older brother, or sister, or cousin to help you with that. Next, you're going to grab another balloon and again, trim off the neck of the balloon, open it up, and put the balloon with your beans inside of this balloon. When you insert it into the balloon, make sure that the tied off end of your balloon goes inside the closed end of the balloon that you just trimmed. That way, the balloon that you filled up is going to be encased inside of this second balloon, helping to make sure that none of your inside filling spills out as you squish your stress ball. This balloon is going to be the color that is going to show through your outer balloon. Blue will be the color that is visible through the red balloon. Now, in the fat round part of the red balloon, you're going to make two small snips. This is so your ninja mask will only reveal a small part of the blue. Once you've made your two small cuts, you're going to trim off the small section, making a square end. Next, you're going to trim off the neck of that balloon, not too short, and you're now going to insert your blue balloon with its filling inside this red balloon. Once you have that complete, use a marker. A permanent Sharpie marker is great. Draw on the blue face of your little ninja. You can make ninja eyes or you can make any type of emoji face that you desire on that blue opening. And feel free to draw a happy smiley face as your stress ball will give you hours of satisfaction. And that's all you need to know to make your very own stress ball. And when you feel stressed out, squeeze away. There are lots of ways that you can cope with stress and become a stress buster. If listening to music helps you, do it. Physical activity and exercise helps to release tension and it gives us something healthy to do in the long run. Yoga is a great way to help you focus on breathing and to help you focus on your body and centering yourself, centering your emotions. I know yoga is not for everyone, but hey, why not just give it a try? And here to help me take you through a couple of yoga exercises is another friendly 4-H agent named Casey. And I'm gonna let her take you through some wonderful yoga poses. Get dressed into something comfortable, something you can move around freely in. And if you've got a yoga mat, get out your yoga mat and follow Casey while she leads you through some very easy and some very simple yoga poses. Hey everyone, my name is Casey Fiermonti. I am the 4-H agent in Scott County, Virginia. And I have been asked to do a few yoga poses from 4-H Yoga for Kids. Start by sitting cross legs and you can take your palms, put them on your knees. You can choose to do them palms down or palms up. Uh, take a deep breath in through your nose. 
Fill up all of your lungs and breathe out. While you're in this position, try to get your back straight. Feel your spine straightening and your neck. Take another deep breath in. And breathe out. And do that one more time. Breathe in deeply. Breathe out. So with yoga and in today's practice, we will be breathing. That's your main focus because during stressful times, we need to remember to breathe. So with all the motions that we're going to be going through today, I'm going to be reminding you to inhale and exhale. So let's go ahead and come into tabletop. Tabletop position is when you're, you're basically forming a table with your body. So you've got your hands underneath your shoulders and you've got your knees underneath your hips. And the tops of your feet are on your mat. And take another three breaths here. We'll do three more breaths. So take a deep breath in and breathe out. Breathe in and out. One more time. Breathe in and breathe out. The next couple of poses that we're doing is cat-cow. That's why I got you into tabletop position because with cat-cow, um, you move based on how you're breathing. So for cow, you take your stomach and you kind of can pretend that there's like a string from your belly button to the mat and it's pulling you down and you look up towards the sky and you take a deep breath in. And then cat is the opposite. I don't know if you're familiar or if you've ever seen a cat arch their back, but that's what cat is. So you bring your spine up towards the ceiling and you breathe out. So you want to kind of flow through this, following your own pace of breath. So every time you breathe in, you... Pretend that there's that invisible string from the, your mat to your belly button, and you look up. And then every time you breathe out, you arch your back towards the sky. And do this maybe for like five breaths at your own pace. When you're done, come back into tabletop. So again, tabletop is when your shoulders, I mean your wrists and your hands are directly underneath your shoulders and your knees are underneath your hips. We are going to go into something that's kind of like balancing. Um, it's just not a standing balancing pose. So if you're not that great at balancing, it's okay. Uh, we're going to go into something called bird dog. And that's when you take your opposite, your, you take one arm and you bring it out. And then you take your opposite leg. So I brought my right arm out. And now I'm going to bring my left leg back. And you can take a breath here. Breathe out. And then you can come back into tabletop. And anytime you do something on one side, you want to do it on the other. So take your left arm out and your right leg back. Take another deep breath. Now, generally, when I do this at school, I let the youth kind of 
follow their breath and switch from um, one side to the other, alternating while they're also remembering to breathe. So I'm going to kind of show you how I do that and then you're going to, you can do it on your own and follow your own pace. So anytime that I bring one arm and one leg up, I take a deep breath in and then I breathe out, come back into tabletop and then I breathe in again. Do this maybe five times, following your own breath. Well, six times, so you can do it three times on each side. I'm now going to show you a pose known as child's pose, which is a very safe pose. So if you ever um, don't feel comfortable doing a pose, you can always come into child's pose. So if you take your knees and kind of spread them apart and you take your hands out in front of you and your arms out in front of you, and you're kind of trying to sit your hip bones back on your feet. Some people aren't that flexible and that's fine. Just try to get it to wherever you can and then you place your forehead on your mat. I hope that you enjoyed this time and you can use some of these practices on your own at home. And sometimes all you really need to do is to sit down and breathe. Hands to heart sitter, namaste, and that means the light in me recognizes the light in you. You see, stress doesn't have to beat you. I want to thank Casey and I want to thank Lynn for helping me with this episode of Health Rocks and helping you all to discover ways that you can be a stress buster. Don't create unnecessary stress by abusing drugs, alcohol, or tobacco. So me and my Fushi are gonna sign off now. We're gonna say goodbye. Find something to laugh about. Find something that makes you happy and gives you joy. This is your favorite 4-H agent, Joe Nett. Bye-bye.